Hello. Today we are talking about defamation from the point of view of the person attacked. So what kind of defense you might have if somebody was bringing allegations and defamation against you in court, or at least if somebody threatens you to sue you in defamation. Uh, first of all, as you might know, uh, there is a right, a fundamental right, uh, of your freedom of expression. It's not absolute. Uh, it's weighted against the right to protect somebody's uh, dignity, honor, and reputation. But at least um, there is a balancing exercise, which the judge would do in court. If you are ever in court, this argument might be brought before during your negotiations, and it might be all put uh, to an end even before any actual litigation, if you bring up good arguments, and this is one of those. Uh, so the more the topic, the information was of public interest, of political interest, of some value to the society at large, uh, or at least to the community at large, or, or as long as there is some like particular public value in those words spread, in the questions raised, uh, the more the freedom of expression uh, would like overbalance uh, the right to dignity, honor, and reputation, and otherwise, actually. But if you think, if you really think, that bringing up that information was not simply to um, make somebody suffer, but because it would be to protect some actual public value, that might be a good argument if you can prove that, of course. Uh, the context here is important, because, you know, spreading some political public opinion during some political public event is one thing, and uh, bringing the same thing at somebody's funeral, God forbid, that would be a different situation, and it might be seen not so favorably in court. Or... Uh, somebody's just private celebration of a wedding or something like that. So context is important. Uh, again, the question of what is in public interest uh, might be answered differently by yourself and by the judge and by your lawyer and the lawyer of the other party. So if you really think that the information that you're going to bring up is sensitive in that, sense, uh, then it's better to verify in advance. Could you bring the question of public interest uh, later on if something bad is happening? Uh, so verification is always a good, always a good idea. Uh, but still, like regular, mm, regularly, uh, political speech uh, and whistleblowing are seen as good examples of the like, speech in the public interest, even though they definitely damage somebody's reputation. But it might not be exactly, you know, like political whistle whistleblowing. It might be that you as a neighbor know that uh, your neighbors are neglecting the baby child or beating him or her or something like that, and you report that to the youth protection direction, um, that might definitely uh, spoil your relationship with your neighbors, and it might not even be uh, later on confirmed, I mean the beating or neglecting or whatever, but it's still in public interest to bring up that information to the authorities, where you have like reasonable suspicion. But again, of course, the question would be, were you exactly diligent in verification of those facts? What did you do to verify? But that would be the next question. Now we're talking, like in this section, we're talking about public interest or not public interest. So protection, somebody personally, not even a child, maybe like some elderly person, vulnerable person, or just whoever whom you think uh, the situation might draw into a danger, 
that would be still like a valid and respectable public interest as opposed to just spreading a rumor to gain some uh, popularity, for example, because uh, that that's less in the public interest and more of a self-serving nature. So you see the contextual implication here. Uh, I mentioned that several times, but again, I should stress that out. Uh, it's not enough to believe what you are saying. It's important to be uh, able to bring up proof that you actually tried to verify and tried like honestly and as hard as the gravity of the accusation uh, justifies. So if it's just simple rumor that your neighbor is uh, dyeing his or her hair, maybe... First of all, it's not that much in the public interest, of course, but here when we are talking of uh, verification, maybe that deserves less of verification than, uh, for example, spreading the information that uh, your friends or just your neighbors or your colleagues' children were adopted. Whether it's truth or not, that would be another question, but it's, it's a graver thing to spread. And here, if for whatever reason, which I right now cannot think of, but technically, if, if you might find how it is in public interest, it's still as much uh, important as to justify like severe, huge, and very diligent search before you proceed there. Well, for example, I mean, uh, of course, if you're a journalist or a member of a similar a professional community, you have a usually you have some code of ethics and uh, though codes of ethics usually again that depends on the professional order but usually they are not of uh, the same value and strength as some legal rules or some regulations though sometimes there are uh, regulations but even if not mm, the courts usually see violation of uh, this kind of code of ethics as something which might prove uh, like absence of diligence and uh, mm, fault itself and vice versa if you acted like in strict observation of those rules in your ethical code that might be your defense so <laughs> it's a good idea to read them if not to follow but at least to know how to protect yourself but better to follow of course uh, then it might be not in public interest and you might be negligent but if you can show though normally it's not up to you but well you might be interested to show that there was no actual damage to a reputation for example the reputation was already damaged and uh, if you spread information that somebody I don't know a a fraud but that information is already out there is already known to the wide public or at least to their like immediate circle of that person depends on where did you spread this information and it's already in discussion and you add it to the discussion uh, then there is no or at least very little uh, damage to reputation caused by you because it was already there, the damage was already there. Also, sometimes, as uh, we discussed before, if you have seen uh, the other parts of uh, this defamation series, uh, there, there is a possibility that the other party just picked up some small word which was not actually really spread or taken into consideration, uh, and uh, then brought it up to the light uh, being enraged and trying to get some compensation against you for example so it might be that the actual damage to reputation was done by that person him or herself as opposed to your like small benign and insignificant word uh, in some like email addressed to two or three persons and they immediately forgot and so on and so on so 
it might be that however negligent and self-sovereign you were, you did not cause any actual damage or not so much actual damage to the reputation. It might be your defense. Uh, it might be that the damage was caused, but you were not the only source and it's hard to understand who started it and who, who actually just brought up uh, that uh, particular damage. So the responsibility might be sp split somehow. That would be up to the judge to see it this way, but you can bring up this argument that, okay, there were like 50 people of us there. We are all shouting the same word, uh, like fraud or freak or I don't know. Uh, so technically, uh, you have like 2% uh, of the whole responsibility in this situation. At least, again, you might make this argument. Uh, and again, uh, if you can show that in collecting the information and verifying the information, in uh, choosing the way, uh, how do you just phrase it, and where do you put it, and uh, what other information you put around, you duly observed your professional code, then it might save the day for you in court if that ever happens. Again, uh, though the regular time limit for a civil claim, like more or less always, there are exceptions, of course, uh, is uh, three years for defamation, one of the exceptions, it's one year. And if it's not a simple defamation, but defamation spread in a newspaper, uh, in the sense of the Press Act newspaper, then it's three months after the publication. So one of uh, the reasons for defense for you could be that uh, the claim is already prescribed, that the claimant, the plaintiff, came up later than one year or later than three months. And so, well, uh, that's the legal rule. The plaintiff might try to show that he never knew before and just get that knowledge, got that knowledge like recently, but that would be up to the plaintiff to show that. Uh, again, if you can prove that that's usually easy if that happens, that happens, that the last moment when this information was spread was more than a year ago, or that the publication was more than three months ago. Uh, again, as we discussed before, uh, you cannot pretend that you're a newspaper if you're not, if you uh, you're some uh, news blog in some kind of online community or a social network or something, uh, because well, the Press Act and connected to it, a Newspaper Declaration Act, uh, are rather limited in uh, the, its their definition of what is a newspaper. Uh, so, as long as you're not, one year. But if you are a journalist working in an actual newspaper, uh, then three months. Uh, it might be seen as an outdated rule, and that's how the Court of Appeal saw it in 2019, but still it's a rule, and the court said that it's not for the court to change the law, it's up to the legislator. So we are waiting, maybe it will happen, maybe not, but right now, if you are not a newspaper in the sense of the Press Act, then one year is your uh, limit for defense. So, again, in an ideal word, world, uh, it would be a good idea to verify all your defenses before you even spread any information. It would be a very good uh, idea to verify before. And if you have any doubt, it would be a very good idea uh, to economize on a future litigation, like to economize a lot of money, actually, uh, to go to a lawyer maybe one, two, three different lawyers if you still have doubts, 
and to ask them like if what are, the information you're going to spread would be seen later on as defamation or not and uh, if those lawyers would give you some advice how to protect you in advance maybe how to edit or maybe even not to spread at all it would be a good idea to follow that advice a lot of legal problems a lot of uh, unpleasant stories in litigation might be avoided if somebody would consult a lawyer in advance or or just like collect some legal information like this one for example in advance because when something already happened because you didn't think once because you didn't think twice because you thought it might go away on its own uh, because you thought that your cause was just and honest and whatever uh, then later on it will it will be much more unpleasant and much costlier and uh, it would bring up a lot of stress so it's worth it to have one unpleasant conversation with a lawyer before than many of those with a lawyer and in court after however it's tempting to bring up some rumor public mm, it's better to think in advance and it's better to have a good advice well evident idea but very often it's neglected somehow thank you and see you next time